Hello, uh, welcome to the ESPC show. It's Paul and it's... Megan? So it is. We should do that the other way around one day, I think. Oh, we did it once and it, it didn't it work. It flummoxed. <laughs> I think I became Megan. Um, yeah. But we're excited today. Yes, we are. We have um, Mark Griffin on the show. He is um, an MSP, um, for a Labour MSP. Yeah. Um, and a spokesperson for housing. For yeah, so he's on a cross-party group. He's MSP for Central Scotland Region since 2011. And uh, we're going to talk all things housing with him, including the housing bill. And we, we just to make that clear, that really covers a, a, a broad range of topics, but we're focusing quite a lot on um, rent and rent controls and rent yeah. caps and what that actually means. So it's really what we're talking about. But we will put the link on if you'd like to know more about the housing bill or the proposed bill and um, it will be linked in the show afterwards yep um, it'll be all be in the show notes below and um, but yeah without further ado i guess we could just pass right over to our conversation i think we should we had with and you definitely had your first time by a champion hat on <laughs> yeah well that's, I'm, I'm always i'm always here for them you're in there you're in the corner <laughs> for first time boys. anyway here's the show we are excited today aren't we megan yeah very excited um, because we have our first msp join us uh, mark griffin hello welcome um i read with interest mark you are the msp for Central Scotland region have been since 2011, which is a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's been a while in the Scottish Parliament now. Hopefully, my face doesn't. <laughs> I think I'm getting older. I think MSPs are looking younger. Um, I think you're on eight cross party groups, and, and housing, which is what we're going to focus on today, is, is one of them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, um, I'm the Labour spokesperson for housing in the Scottish Parliament. Spend a lot of my time talking about the issues. Um, around housing, the cross party group on housing is a really good platform for that as well. Yeah, and there's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. A lot going on. And in fact, that's probably a good place to start, isn't it, Megan? Yeah, absolutely. So the day that this um, episode goes out is going to be World Homelessness Day. And um, obviously, that's quite a hot topic just now in government. Um, yesterday, um, as when we're recording this, it was yesterday, but it was the 2nd of October when Anna Sarwar's motion that the government had failed um, to tackle the housing emergency was debated in, in Parliament. And then the, the amended motion was passed with 59 votes versus 55 against um, and eight abstentions. Um, so, yeah, we wanted to talk about the, mm. the housing crisis with you today, Mark. And um, yeah, what kind of your thoughts were and what your ideas to, to solve that um, the crisis would be from a Labour point of view? Yeah, I mean, we tabled that motion because we were really frustrated. Um, we had figures, the, the figures out last week on homelessness levels, the figures that we've seen on house building, on uh, approvals, starts and completions. You know, it, it's almost a perfect storm mm -hmm. in the housing world. Mm -hmm. Record levels of homelessness, record levels of kids in temporary accommodation, and then at the same time, the worst ever set of construction figures almost. Um, so it is a perfect storm in housing in Scotland at the moment. So. Back in May, we had tabled a motion asking the Parliament and the Government to declare a housing emergency. Um, the Government eventually uh, gave in and uh, accepted that, really because they were staring down the, the barrel of a parliamentary defeat rather than they believed what they're saying, I, I think. So we did get to the place where the Government accepted that, and then we are now months and months down the line the government have accepted there is a housing emergency, but where is the emergency response? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that was the issue for us. We tabled that, that motion for the de debate to say, um, where is your emergency response? And particularly in reference to the, the, the catastrophic housing figures that came out the week before. So really disappointed that the government can't seem to, to own their record. Um, they've been in government for 17 years. You would think they'd um, own their own record and have some... Um, plan to, to address the emergency. There is a, a vacuum of leadership, I think, mm -hmm. in the Scottish Government just now. Um, we are working hard and we will hopefully uh, replace that government and bring some of those ideas that we mentioned in the, the chamber um, to the table to try and uh, lift the country out of that emergency. Mm -hmm. I mean, the seeds of this were sown probably even before you were an MSP. There's, some of this has been going a long time, but it does feel like we've reached that, as you say, that perfect storm now. Um, yeah, it'd be good to hear about some of your ideas, I think. Yeah, just in case anyone didn't listen to the debate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, I'm sure many people did. I mean, I think the, the fundamental issue that we have in Scotland when it comes to housing is we're not building enough. Yeah. So, you know, the last time Labour were in government was, you know, it's a long time ago now, but over the course of that year, eight years in government, Labour, we were seen in the country 
just under 24,000 houses built a year on average. Um, the, the current government's record is that um, they are building um, just under 19,000 houses a year. They, that is a, it's a huge shortfall, and to, to me that's how we've gotten to the problem that we are in today, that there are just not enough houses have been built. When I think the shortfall is 100,000, isn't it, since 2009? Yeah. Uh, I think they were the Homes for Scotland figures, which is it's a lot of property. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if we'd, if we'd seen the same level of house building um, as a previous administration, we'd, we'd be 86,000 houses more in this country than we have at the moment. Now, that, that's a huge, huge number. Mm -hmm. And for us, it, it comes down to the kind of regulatory environment that house builders are, are working in just now. Um, the planning system is so clogged up, um, it's so overburdened. Local authorities have had cuts um, passed down for the last 10 years. And if you, you, know, you look at local authority budgets, they spend money generally in three areas. It's um, social care, social work, education, and then everything else is that final third. Now, the first two areas have generally been protected as best they can by councils. And that other third has been absolutely hammered by the cuts, and that's planning. That's planning, regeneration, development. So we're hearing stories of you know developers um, putting emails into council planning departments and getting an automatic reply saying, you know, we won't reply to this email within twelve weeks. Don't bother us again. And hmm. um, within that period, or you'll just go back to the bottom of the list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> construction has absolutely ground to a halt, we need to look at ways of opening that up. But we've suggested a few different things on, on planning, on empty houses and other things. But on planning, we've talked about setting up um, a central resource, essentially a planning hit squad um, held by central government where you would look at authorities who are having difficulty with um, processing their applications, sending that hit squad in, um, getting through a backlog, getting the construction industry moving again with our particular problems. You still have local decision making, mm -hmm. but just have the, the resources to, to work through that backlog. Yeah. I think you need to look at as well, um, there are some developers who are essentially seconding or loaning staff into planning departments, you know, not to work on the planning applications uh -huh. of their own <laughs> bosses, that, yeah. that wouldn't be right. Yeah. But if you can give a member of staff that, that uh, works on other applications, to free up a dedicated member of staff in the, the planning department to support yeah. and then work through the applications for a particular company then. So these are these are things that we could yeah. and should be doing. The developers are uh, yeah. up for this, aren't they? Yeah, because yeah, when won't. we listen to Homes for Scotland and we've had them in, they mm -hmm. talk a lot about this, don't they? About it's taken years rather than yeah. months to get things through. Is, is, is that the case? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think that the average is sitting at two years, right about two years for a major planning application to get through. Now that is a lot of time um, for a developer's yeah. uh, capital to be held up when you think about all the money that is spent on a pre-application, mm. all the assessments and different things that um, need to be uh, done. That is a huge amount of capital being held up um, in that time. And it's easy to see why. Um, we are getting reports of you know, construction companies, investors looking at Manchester, looking at other parts yeah. of the, the north of England and money just going south. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really, really need it. Don't yeah, we? Absolutely. we really need it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we really do need to fix that supply issue, don't we, and, and speed up that process. And um, Landlords have had a bit of a rough time, <laughs> and we've seen that with rent caps, and, and, and now we're in rent controls. Um, we often tell the story of a one-bedroom flat that we put on the other week. I mean, we were just talking about it, weren't we, Megan? Yeah. Um, there was one bedroom flat went up for rent and the, within 24 hours we'd had 100 um, inquiries through. So the, the demand is, well, I mean, that's that's the whole crux of the housing mm. crisis, isn't it? That mm -hmm. the demand is outstripping the so supply. And there's one successful applicant and 99. Yeah. And our question, obviously, is where do those 99 people end up? Yeah. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting to get your take because, you know, we, we're obviously very heavily into the residential sales market, but not everybody can buy. Um, so we feel that the environment for landlords needs to improve to, to, to bring them back. Because as you say, again, currently, I think they'd go elsewhere in the UK. And that's, a, that's again, that compounds the issue. Yeah, or just leave the market or entirely. The market we saw that entirely. last, last yeah. year, um, mm. the increase of two-bedroom flats for sale skyrocketed yeah. in the city. Yeah, I think we, think we lost about 20% of our own portfolio. So just wondering what your take on that would be, Mark. 
I mean, we've said to landlords and others that, you know, we want to work with them. Essentially, what mm -hmm. I've said to landlords is um, we would have a no surprises policy that we're not going to spring anything on you. We know that the key to investment is having that long term certainty, regulatory certainty, legislative certainty. And we would have, have a no surprises policy. But, the, you know, the big thing hanging over the sector just now is obviously the housing bill. Yeah. And that is... Um, it's coming at some points, isn't it? <laughs> a, it's a whole load of uncertainty. Mm. Yeah. Um, now we've said that we support a, a form of rent regulation. Mm. We've been up front about that. Yeah. But I have said that we would want to work with the sector, make sure you know, tenants have certainty, investors have certainty, landlords have certainty, looking at something around um, regulation linked to inflation. Inflation plus one or Inf something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Something like that that gives mm -hmm. everyone certainty. <coughs> Um, that we still, even with that system, we still need to look at potential unintended consequences. We know that uh, landlords who have tenants for a long period of time will often not increase the rent mm -hmm. on a certain tenant because they don't want to lose them. Yep. Um, and they will look at recalibrating rent when there's a, a change over of tenancy. So, you know, caps between tenancies could have a, a, a real impact. We're also looking at. Um, the impact that could potentially have on investment in properties. You know, the government are pushing landlords and others to upgrade their, their properties to to meet the, the net zero agenda. Where's the where's the incentive? How can you invest money to bring your property mm -hmm. up to whichever standard the government set when there is a a cap between tenancies? So yeah. these are the You're kind of squeezed the both sides at that the, point. These are the kind of unintended consequences that I think have to be thought through mm -hmm. um, and make sure we're not causing a bigger problem. The, the real issue that I have with um, the housing bill just now, and I've been up front and open with uh, Paul McLennan, the government and others to say that we can't, we will not vote for it in its current format, we cannot support it because of the uncertainty that's baked into it. You know, there's no detail yep. on that bill. It's a kind of vague notion of we'll pass the bill, um, we council, have the rights. Yeah, council will go out to consultation. Mm -hmm. They'll submit a report to ministers at some point mm -hmm. in the future. Ministers might decide, yeah, we'll have rent controls. Maybe we'll have a rent freeze mm -hmm. for some um, unspecified lengths of time. But there's absolutely no certainty. When you think about the housing market, it's one um, market where you need to give absolute um, you want You want to make informed long, decisions. Long, yeah, long investment term decisions. Certainty. Yeah. And the kind of the bill as it stands is the worst of both worlds because no certainty to tenants, landlords or, or investors. Yeah. So what? Why would you mess? Um, why would you mess with that? And for me, as well, it's kind of it's treating a symptom. Um, it's not treating the cause. It's a housing bill that doesn't build a single house. No. And that is the that is the real issue yeah. facing yeah. Uh, housing in Scotland that we're just not building enough. No. Back to the supply issue again, isn't it really? Uh, but you, you, interesting, you did touch upon there on. Um, minimum standards for letting in the future, um, yes. 2028. We we think it's proposed at the moment in the heat and buildings bill, which is another bill which is we're waiting for the detail of. And I think we're talking about um, landlords it being at a C, um, and you know if it's below a C, you wouldn't be able to rent it out. Um, again, just wondering what you take. You know, is that the? I mean, I think we all accept that we we absolutely have to get to carbon neutral, you know, we, the, the, you know, carbon zero, that has to happen. So, you know, and we know housing is a, is a big contributor to emissions. So I don't think anyone is trying to deny there's a climate, climate issue crisis, more crisis here as well. But um, it's probably how we go about this, I think, isn't it? Yeah, the, I mean, we're waiting to see the detail of that bill. The consultation's closed, but we haven't seen a, a bill at all. Mm -hmm. There's been a change in government. Um, with the Greens dropping out of government, so we've seen some changes. So, you know, the government have rolled back on yeah. their uh, wood burning stove ban. Mm -hmm. So th that's kind of pointing to a, a direction bit of, a softening of travel maybe. of government. Yeah. But yeah. we're we're kind of in the dark here a bit. Um, but I, I think some of the things that the government had previously talked about about you know hard bans on gas boilers and things, the, the notion that you would rip out a perfectly good heat system, mm -hmm. chuck it on the scrap heap to install something else, uh, absolutely flies in the face of a, a, a net zero, save the planet agenda. Yeah. I think it's much more sensible if you were looking at a, an approach, it's, you know, end of life, we get to a point where we don't replace um, 
gas or carbon emitting sources, you know, re replace them with something else. But the notion that you would have a hard ban where you would tell people to to rip out this perf perfectly good phase, systems yeah. is, is absolute nonsense. Yeah, I I, I I agree. I think a phased in approach, we do have a bit of time to, you know, we have 20 plus years to get this right. Um, so I, I, th I think you're right. Um, okay. I th I think one of the other things, I mean, this is your bag, first time buyers, isn't it, Megan? Yeah, well, just before we touch mm. on that, um, we did um, um, some research around the heat and build, well, around the energy efficiency of properties um, with some members of the public. Um, and I think what we were well, we, what we were quite shocked by was just the lack of awareness of these changes that are proposed um, going forward. Is that something that, um, you know, Labour, you know, a prospective Labour government would um, take into account, you know, how would you raise awareness of these kind of energy bills? I mean, there was 73% of um, the people we researched with um, were not aware of the government's plans to introduce um, minimum standards of energy efficiency in owner-occupied homes. So is, yeah, is that The other something? one, and 90% and did expect the government to contribute towards the cost yeah. of <laughs> just <Yeah>. saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that raising mm. awareness piece. Yeah, the, and that's a big issue because... You know, I have a lot of people who, you know, they've had a gas boiler, gas central heating their whole lives. They don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. And we're asking them to switch to new, strange, unknown technologies. Mm -hmm. that, and the last thing you want is for people to spend thousands of pounds, repla replace their heating system. And it's totally inappropriate or inadequate. We've seen examples of you know, infrared heating. Um, systems in parts of the country that have been installed and are now being ripped out because they're, they're totally inadequate. We've got district heating schemes in a part of Glasgow that's causing real problems because people can't switch suppliers, so they're locked, they're locked in, they're yeah. locked in mm -hmm. and it's got a real problem when you know, they build up arrears for whatever reason, they're being um, cut off. Okay. But there's no yeah. alternative supplier because... Yeah. Of, a, it's a district heating scheme. So what, Do you think those schemes might be state-owned in the yeah, future? Yeah, so what what we have talked about is um, essentially a first-stop shop model. We have first-stop shops in councils right across the country where people will you know, drop in, talk about their housing concerns, talk about the council tax, um, essentially replicate that, but um, an er energy efficiency standard first-stop shop. So people can go and have the, the confidence that we know particularly a lot of older owner occupiers just don't have the confidence that they don't have a cowboy at their door. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, spray foam insulation springs to mind yeah. at this point. You know, yeah. I, I'm sure there is a good way to do it, but equally there's a very bad way, and it's made properties unmortgageable. We, I mean, we've got plenty of cases from our firms on that basis. So, yeah. you know, again, that's all part of the education process, isn't it? And bring, building yeah. in a standard and um, an approved set of contractors to do yeah. this future yeah. work. So I that's think. what we're talking about. First stop shops that people can go in and get that independent information. A government-backed accreditation scheme, so they know when someone comes up at the door, they've got a badge, they've got Scottish government accreditation, they're not going to be ripped off. And but the, the other uh, third part of that, I think, is to give people certainty on the technology. Um, so you can't have a whole swathes of the country just pick and choose. I mean, you don't want a VHS Betamax <laughs> no, you do situation not. with people's yeah. um, home yeah. heating system. Uh, the government should have been doing um, the early investment, looking at um, installing people's new up and techno technologically advanced heating systems for free to see what works yeah. best before there is a big rollout into the wider consumer market. That is something that um, that we are really frustrated about, that the government talks a good game, but mm -hmm. it's endless, endless talk and words and there's mm -hmm. a failure to act. And I think industry really wants to help and I think there's a lot of industry sitting there thinking give us some clarity on this and we're, we're, you know, we're ready to really get going and, and invest in it as you say and that standard is so important because we need to avoid another cladding crisis here don't we where yeah. you know, there's, there's issues down the line that are unforeseen. Um, okay, now that's really interesting. Yes, yeah, sorry, we, Paul. No, we'll not move at on all, to the first time all. buyers. Yeah, yeah, it's your pet subject. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're really passionate about you know helping first time buyers become informed, educating themselves before they purchase their first property, and also helping them find their first property. Um, however, in Scotland, we you know we would love to see more support for first time buyers. At present, there's the lift scheme, which is you know closes almost as soon as it opens now, and the 
um, relief, the tax relief for it. Land and buildings transactions tax, which is um, instead of 145,000, you get relief on, um, you don't have to pay tax till 175,000. However, you know, we were chatting about how in England um, that tax is, um, the relief is starts at £425,000 for a property, which gives first-time buyers a, a much bigger um, market to play with if, if to get that relief in, in Scotland. In Edinburgh specifically, mm. you're not going to get very much for £175,000. So, yeah, wondered what your kind of opinion was on... It's trying what to level up the. It's, there's a bit of an inequality, I think, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, there's an example. I think three hundred and fifty thousand pound purchase in England, um, zero stamp duty uh, in Scotland, LBTT seven thousand seven hundred and fifty. So, seems to be a big gap there. Mm-hmm. Well, not seems to be. There is. Yeah. So, so yeah, what we were wondering was uh, what your kind of thoughts were on and any initiatives that could help first time buyers get on the ladder. Um, I mean, I think obviously the housing market in England is is different to what it is in Scotland. So I think it's right that we do have different levels. Potentially, we sh- we should look at different levels across the country. The the housing market you know, to reflect the different prices. It's yeah. very different to to what it is in in Lanarkshire or or other parts of the country. That something we we could probably look at I don't know the mm-hmm. uh, exact details of what the the Scotland Act says in terms of devolution as as to whether we could look at variable levels but you know something we possibly should what what we have said um and that was an announcement we made at our last uh, conference that we think would be really helpful for first time buyers is you know developers when they build their um schemes they have a 25% requirement for affordable housing now Generally, that goes to a social landlord, that 25%. But because of the budget cuts to the affordable housing supply budget, social landlords are having real difficulty um, taking on that 25%, which is holding up um, a lot of building sites. But there is another element of the affordable housing supply uh, programme that you could use. You could use discounted sale. Um, So that 25% affordable homes requirement could be offered up for discounted sale. Um, discounted in perpetuity, um, particularly to support first-time buyers um, to get their foot on the housing ladder. But then when they sell, it's still at mm-hmm. that percentage discounted sure. rate. So it's helping the next first-time buyer, the next, the next, the next. So that's something we have... It's quite creative. We've yeah. said, you know, that potentially solves two problems at the one time. The, um, the hold-up in sites because social landlords can't take the property, but also given... Uh, buyers the option uh, to buy a discounted home that they can afford. Yeah, if we can build these under two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I think that was the the key topics that we were looking to discuss. Paul, I don't know if there's anything. No, else you want I, to add. I think we we we've covered everything that we had on our list. Is there anything else, Mark, that you wanted to cover or chat about today? Uh, <laughs> Without it being so. a party political <laughs> broadcaster. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, just just generally really appreciate the the chance to. Um, have a chat all things housing it's yeah. a really big topic um, I think um, when you look at an MSP's inbox it has really really ramped up yeah. more and more um, inquiries about housing whether it's people who you know can't get a social house can't afford their rent they can't afford t- to buy it's really shot up the political agenda for years we've talked about you know uh, NIMBYs and people opposing new housing developments for me that has absolutely uh, crumbled mm-hmm. uh, people everyone you speak to will know they've got a son, a daughter, a niece a nephew, grandkids who can't get their own house people want to see um, new housing going up for the probably it's tipped into a point that I haven't seen for 10, 20 years so it's a really exciting time to be involved yeah. in housing and uh, addressing some of the challenges so it's yeah. good to you know, we're having a chat about it today yeah. and we're desperate to help. Yeah. yeah, no, it's great to hear. And I say, I do think we are on the cusp of change. Something has to give, you know, this this emergency has to get ultimately solved. And as you say, it's across all 10 years and it's all age groups. I mean, we have done some research and we'll be posting it soon. I, I mean, when I was growing up, you saw a lot of bungalows getting built. You don't see bungalows getting built these days. So it, it's, you know, it, we've spoken a lot about first-time buyers, but at the other end, there's people who want to retire and, 
want to downsize and again that would free up property but they've got nowhere to go to you know so I think it's a it's a all ends and it's a all and even in the middle I mean we speak about <laughs> these second steppers yeah. we speak about people who've bought their first home and then they want to have a family and want a bit of green space and it's just unaffordable for them to move mm-hmm. um, into a bigger home so yeah I think a lot of problems would be solved with um, more just more mm. properties I like to think if we're sitting here in five years time that we've made some really big steps and you know things are a lot better and, and yeah. I think that'll be Really good, and I think it'd be really good for the economy because this is a wheel that turns many other wheels, isn't it? People spend a lot of money, as we know. Mm-hmm. When you buy a property, it really does, you know, local trade puts the money back into their money cycle locally as well, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, Mark, thank you very much indeed for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, there we go. Um, I think we made some elements of politics fun there. Yeah, hopefully. Serious subject, though. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if you want to find out more about anything that we discussed, we'll pop all the links below to all the bills we mentioned and um, the outcome of the debate that happened on the 2nd of October that we also spoke to Mark about. Um, If you enjoyed this political chat, we hope it's the first of many. Um, So please hit subscribe wherever you're watching or listening and you can keep up to date with um, our future episodes. I'm just touching on that point. We have invited government on um, to the show for a similar session and we're waiting to hear back and we remain optimistic they'd like to come on and have a chat with us about it because we we would really like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, But yeah, until next week, that's us. Yeah, have a great week. Take care. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.